are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio. We are here once again, and today, man, we have a true honor talking to a special guest today, man. He has an amazing story when it comes to being an entrepreneur and being his own boss, a business owner, but just like anyone else, he has a powerful story. We have our guest today, Brandon C. White. You can go to his website, brandoncwhite.com, and make sure you get your calendar and remember the date of July 1st because he has an amazing book coming out that you can get anywhere, including Amazon. So the title of the book is Back of the Napkin to Business Plan in 11 Slides. So easy, you can do it on a flight from San Francisco to New York. You want to make sure you remember to pre-order, or if you want to wait till July 1st, make sure you go support his book and make sure you get that. But without further ado, I want to welcome Brandon C. White to the show. So how are you doing, sir? Hey, thank you so much for having me. I'm really grateful. Man, I appreciate you taking your time, sir. So, man, start out with our audience kind of telling us your journey what inspired you to be your own boss because something sparked tell us a little bit about your journey yeah i think my journey started i think it found me i think life happens that way sometimes and i think most of the people who miss it miss it because they're not listening mine started because i was working on my master's degree in psychology and i wanted to start of all things a magazine for fishermen on light tackle fly fishing. And there was no magazine. I went to the local printer and through a series of questions that he asked me, realized that the $827 in my bank account was probably not going to get a first edition of a magazine out the door. And it's going to date me a little bit, but not that much. I was in my 20s when I started my first company. And there was this thing called the internet and it was 1996 and I said or asked the question, why can't I just put a magazine on the internet? And that sounds like, uh, duh, of course, like that's what we do now, Brandon. But back then that was not what was happening. Uh, in fact, we mainly had BBS boards and we had resources. Amazon was really just the first year. I mean, we became an affiliate program with the site that that I built and created. And back then, it wasn't even called affiliate programs. It was called an associate programs. And Jeff Bezos sent me a t-shirt for being one of the first associates. Um, the internet was really young. And I put this thing on the internet. I found a... I did some programming myself, but I found a really smart person in the computing lab. I got a second job so that I could afford to pay him. And that's how we got started. And in three months, we were written up in a magazine that back then being written up in a magazine drove traffic to your website. I figured out that why have professional writers, which I couldn't afford anyway, why wouldn't we just get the users to leave the content behind? Novel idea seems now, right, with every social network. But this is the early days when you know, we had to write the software for a bulletin board, which is really the Facebook wall or the Instagram wall or TikTok or whatever you're whatever you're used to using. And I figured out that for a while nobody came and nobody left any information. And my wife and I would at night go on to the AOL forums and copy down usernames because people's usernames at AOL were their was their email address. It was just at AOL. And we would copy in three columns on legal pads all night, people's email. And the next day I would email individually because we didn't even really have email programs to do lists back then. Every single person, tell them that I saw them in the forum or I'd exchange a message with them in the in the chat room and that I had a website on phishing that they might enjoy. And literally did that for months at a time. I pretended to be 12 people on that message board answering myself. and then. It's sort of like the restaurant when you go by a restaurant and there's a long line, you'll get in that line. But the restaurant that has nobody, nobody comes and nobody adventures there. So when the message board, which is what we call it, bulletin board, wall, whatever you want to call it, 
had traffic, people started coming and leaving the information. And that's really, we were off to the races. And it was a pretty incredible journey of raising money. I had never raised money for anything before. I decided that I had read, I used to read in the library in the morning and in the beginning, in the front of Time Magazine, there was a section sort of like new and innovative or something it was called. And it had an article about these two people, two guys, David Bilo and Jerry Yang, and talked about how they were building this, what would amount to, they described as a phone book on the internet. And we were using Yahoo at the time to find sites. It was really all a manual process back then. And it talked about how they had raised $1.7 million from Sequoia Capital. And I said to the guy who was working for me, like, if they can do it, we can do it. And I went to Barnes and Noble bookstore, which was sort of a thing back then. And my, in my wife's now wife, then girlfriend's car. And we went to that Barnes and Noble in Annapolis, Maryland. I bought a book called How to Write a Business Plan. Ironically, the book took longer to read than the business plan, which was sort of the inspiration for my book, but uh, early inspiration. Long and short of it, after about five months, we wrote a business plan, 50 some pages, and we went out and and tried to raise money. And in the beginning, I had no idea what I was doing. I just started asking around. There was a guy in our alumni um, monthly college magazine that came out and it said that he was raising money or was becoming an investor. I wrote him. He wrote me back. We started talking. One day he sends an email that says, hey, I met a guy that you might want to meet. He's a venture capitalist and he says he uses your site and he wants to talk to you. Now, what I left out there for a second is, is that I wrote that business plan and I put it in a FedEx envelope and sent it to Sequoia Capital to this who in Time Magazine said they invested in Yahoo. And it was a guy by the name of Mike Moritz, and I wrote him a letter. I, I have no idea what I'm doing. So that's what I do. I put it in, and I never heard back. Well, I get this email um, from this potential investor who says, I met this person who uses your site. He'd like to get in touch with you. I just wanted to ask you before I did that. I was like, yeah, sure. And I get this email, and it said, uh, hi, Brandon. Uh, I met with Matt. Tells me what you were doing. Um, you might know, I, I, I'm a venture capitalist. I just retired from this firm you might know called Sequoia Capital. We did Yahoo, Cisco, Apple, and a few other companies. I use your site. I'd love to come talk to you about what you're doing. You can imagine a guy, a person sitting in their spare bedroom in a small 1,400 square foot house that he, me and my wife scraped every last hour we had to buy, which was $108,000. And you get an email like this, it's a little surreal. So I, in sort of cheeky format, right back, oh man, you know, I sent our business plan to your partner and he never got back to us, but I'd love to see you. Why don't you come tomorrow? Here's my address. Attaches a business plan. And the next day I got a knock at the door and it's this guy and he walked into my house. And we started talking, like, I'm in a little disbelief anyway. And we started talking. He's like, hey, let's go see your office. So I just shut the front door, turned around, and started walking up our steps. And I don't know if you've ever had a situation, and those listeners probably have, where it's that awkward moment where you sort of feel like you're letting someone down, and they're confused, and you're confused, and you're starting to feel really hot because you're starting to panic. And I was, that's what happened to me. And I just said, just turn around and keep walking, Brandon. So I walked up, he followed me, walks into the spare bedroom that's an office, looks around and he said, is this it? And I looked at him and I said, well, we can drive down the road to my partner's house and he has a spare bedroom too, but yeah, that's it. <laughs> and, and then I, I said, listen, if you came here looking for something bigger, different, more advanced, whatever that is, I'm really sorry. You know, we can call it a day. And he looked at me, sort of tilted his head, and he said, calm down, kid. This is how we found Cisco. I thought you were much bigger because I called your number. And you've got this phone system that 
go through. And we did. I rigged it. Like, it looked bigger. You call the phone system. I, I don't even know if it was Grasshopper or what it was back then. It was very unsophisticated, but it worked and it sounded bigger. And we started talking. We went to lunch. Did the business plan on the back of a placemat. I can remember to this day, had these pens that he uses that pen that sort of bleeds ink, if you know what I mean. It's a ballpoint pen. And he put it in his pocket. We were finishing up lunch. And I was like, you know, do you want to go fishing? He said, yeah, let's go fishing. So went back to the house, hooked up my 21-foot parker, went to the boat ramp, went fishing, caught a lot of fish. And on the way back, I'm driving down a highway in on Maryland's eastern shore. It's a big highway and we're going fast, so I'm paying attention. And he, he said, how much money do you have in your bank account? I said, well, I actually don't know. And he said, well, what do you mean you don't know? And I said, well, we trade stocks to fund the company. He said, what? I was like, yeah, we trade stocks. So maybe we have five, maybe we have 10, maybe we have 20 today. I have no idea. My partner's trading, but that's what we've been doing. We sell websites, but we don't make enough money to live, so we trade stocks. He's like, you trade stocks with company money. I was like, well, it's my company. So yeah, I trade stocks with company money. Yes. And he just shook his head and kept driving. And I'm trying to pay attention, driving the road 65 miles an hour, pulling a 21 foot center console boat, driving an uh, SUV. And I see him doing something, but I don't know what he's doing. And and he he hands me over a check. And I look down, it's $50,000. And he's like, let's go. And that's really how my life started in being an entrepreneur. So, and then we raised a million dollars and, and a lot of things happened, but that was sort of the pivotal moment that happened at that moment. And that moment, probably not probably it forever changed my life. He and I are very close friends to this day. Um, and he did a lot of things for me and us that he didn't need to do. And that's, just changes the trajectory of my life. I, I, the dot com crashed. I bought the company back from the investors. I turned it into a cash flow positive business. Did some other things. I was uh, worked at marketing in America Online. I was a venture capitalist for two venture firms. I went to business school. I then decided to go back and do this business full time. I really w- had contractors that I had hired to manage a lot of it, and I had automated a lot of it. It was a big website largest fishing site on the internet. And then I went back full time after business school with a plan for five years to sell it. And I wanted to move to Northern California. My wife's originally from Southern California. In order to live out here in Silicon Valley, you got to make a lot of money because the houses are just expensive. So uh, year four, someone knocked a large public media company, bought us for a bunch of money and sold the company on Wednesday and bought this house where this recording studio is now in the backyard overlooking the Pacific Ocean here in Half Moon Bay. And that's changed my life forever. Man, that's that's a powerful story. And you are currently the CEO of uh, File Finder, an app that helps people find files uh, that they know they have, but, you know, faster. Tell us a little bit about just your mindset when you look back at your failures but you look at where you are today as a successful businessman. What would you say to someone out there who could be in that rough patch where they are not necessarily increasing, but they are still passionate with what they do? Yeah, so I think it's important that I say that I have, and I've had two exits so far, um, really a third. I had three. One was more, um, we closed the company down because we were done and my partner was older and got paid out of that. So been really fortunate. Having said that, what's important to know is that because of the time constraint of this show, we didn't talk about the 20 times that I failed. And what's important about that is that You got to keep stepping up to the plate and you've got to keep going many, many times in life. You are so close to success and you quit just when you're about to have that pivotal moment, change of life, turn around, whatever you want to call it. And you do have to know when to quit. I mean, my model of knowing when to quit is 
you have an idea, which I call a project for a product or service, and people won't buy it or you can't make money at it. And for me, that's just a sign. It's, hey, you tried, you know, pack it up, make sure you tried everything you can. Um, but then there's these other things where you're getting some traction. It never happens as fast as you want it to. And nothing ever happens fast. I mean, I mean, we can talk about great companies. I'm a little bit uh, older in the internet. I'm, I'm modern, of course. But, you know, AOL took 20 years to, to make a few billion dollars. You can listen to Steve Case's story. Um, Facebook is not an overnight success. You know, I remember Facebook coming out when I was in business school in 2004. It was a closed thing. UNC Chapel Hill is one of the first, first outside of Harvard and the Ivy Leagues uh, schools to get on there. And, you know, now everybody's like, oh, well, Facebook's a big success. Well, you know, it was it, it did grow very fast, but it wasn't an overnight success. It took years to figure that out. Amazon and the list goes on. So I think you have to realize that you don't believe the stories online of people taking their pictures in with Lamborghinis and jets. I would probably say most of those were rented. Um, and don't let that get in your head. It, it, there's no magic pill. There are some overnight successes, but they are far and few between. Most millionaires, multimillionaires, billionaires took, you know, a decade, two or three to sort of get there. So even four. Um, and started smaller. Their successes were smaller and they built up as they've went. So I think you really just have to keep going and you've got to be aware of where you truly are in the market, not where you think you are in your business. I've been lucky enough. I do a lot of things now because I really created my own venture fund. So I've sort of worked my way up the ladder from needing to raise money and then buy it back and sort of earning that money and then are laying this into where now I can be my own investor in my own ideas. I can be an angel investor in other ideas as well from other entrepreneurs that I that I see their businesses and I could help with and would want to work with. But you, you just sort of have to take one step at a time and understand that it's really the consistency that wins. You, you can be have it have an okay product, okay service that does make money. And just stay in the game. You know, in 2001, the market crash, last man standing, last person standing wins. That's what was my philosophy. I didn't think the internet was going away. 2008, we go back, we have a real estate crash. The internet, uh, real estate, none of that was going away. Those who survived would be winners. We're, we're in a very weird post COVID situation right now. My philosophy is, and I started File Finder. Um, I want to start in a down market. So my advice to people is just figure out how to last and get through these times because eventually, as long as you stay in the game, you will have a breakthrough. You you will need to be able to recognize that breakthrough, but you'll get to it, but you'll never get to it if you stop. Once again, listen to Army Focus Radio, talking to our special guest today, Brandon C. White. You can go visit his website, brandoncwhite.com. And don't forget, July 1st, he has a book coming out on Amazon, but you can go right now and pre-order the book, Back of the Napkin to Business Plan to, excuse me, Business Plan in 11 Slides. So easy, you can do it on a flight from San Francisco, Francisco to New York. Brandon, I don't want to end this conversation without you plugging your book and giving us a little bit of some teasers that people can appreciate when they read it. Kind of tell us a little bit the principal core of of why you wrote this book for the readers. I got tired of people doing bad business plans. I learned a lot of lessons myself, having been an investor and an entrepreneur and raising we didn't talk about all the things. I mean, I've raised money for other companies from, from professional angels to Sand Hill Road VCs. And I think one of the things that I struggled with with business books and all sorts of books, self-improvement books, is, is that they write these standard 60,000-word books and they try to fill the pages when, in fact, our tagline, because this is actually a series, Back of the Napkin 2 is a series. Our first book is How to Write a Business Plan 11 Slides is is the idea that our success is actually making it short so you can actually use it get to the point and have actionable things so 
took me, a, it was very hard on this one. I got this book to under 25,000 words. You can read it in one sitting. And there is a formula, an example. Your problem slide is this simple. A person does something, their pain is existing solutions are broken because. That's how you can find a, biz, a product or service that has some sort of problem. And then you, the solution is, is your solution slide. And we keep going that way with that with it that simple. And in the book, I give examples of how to do it. We go through in the beginning, your first, your first slide is your company name and your elevator pitch. Your elevator pitch is one of the most important things. You did a great job and I'm so grateful for you plugging File Finder, which is we help you find files you know you have but can't find faster. You need to have an elevator pitch that good. For most listeners, I would bet they're interested in having the conversation based on that statement, meaning, yeah, I've wasted three hours looking for a file that I know I have and I can't find. How can you help me? Now we've opened the conversation. And what I've done is taken these concepts and made them so simple and so straightforward that if you follow this formula, you will come out with a business plan that you can use as your playbook to build your business. And it's not one and done. You're going to adjust this business plan all the time. And because it's so easy to do, you'll do it. Whereas all these complicated business plans and all this stuff that people sell, pitch and whatever, is just not useful. And there's times for stories. There, you know, We all want to hear stories and that helps inspire and motivate us. And then there's books where we want to hear a story, but we actually want the nuggets of gold without having to distill it over a 50-page chapter when you could really say that in three or four sentences. So that's our goal with this series of books. The first one, it is that our goal is, and my goal in writing it, I'm saying our, because there was a team of people that helped me that I would never have been able to get through it, especially my operations director, Gia, uh, without having their help, but is, can you do what we're going to these series of books, can you do it on a flight from San Francisco to New York? And if you can't, then we failed, not you. And that was the goal of this series of books. So the the, the first book here is you'll get a business plan with a, that will be your playbook, and you'll be able to literally do it, at least your first draft on a flight from San Francisco to New York. And for those listening, whether they are thinking about entrepreneurship, they never started is this book also, is it for, and is it designed for any level of experience? It is especially designed for any level. And the reason is, is because the level doesn't change with, the, the, even though in a, this is designed for a person who has an idea and has wanted to build their business and build that into a dream business. And it's designed for someone who has an existing business that may be doing $50 million in revenue and launching a new product or service. And it's designed for anybody, even in corporate America, because I know when I worked at America Online, I worked for the premium services division and we had many businesses within the business. So there, the, those people are entrepreneurs, right? Within an organization. And it's just important to have a business plan in a corporation where you're going to have to build the business plan and pitch for funding internally. So it's meant for the the widest spectrum of anyone who wants to build a business, a business unit, um, any sort of company, product, or service. You've been listening to I'm Focus Radio. Go visit our guest website, brandoncwhite.com, and make sure July 1st you get the book on Amazon or anywhere you can get a book. It's back of the pant, excuse me, back of the napkin to business plan in 11 slides. So easy. You can do it on a flight from San Francisco to New York. Real quick, while we still have you on, I love the part of this conversation where you, you, you're you talking about the small beginnings. I mean, you bring the guy in your house and you're like, yeah, the office space is a couple steps this way. But, and I want to point that out because a lot of times people get discouraged when they are in those small beginning seasons and they allow that to stop them to grow based on your experience. What did you do for yourself to motivate yourself to keep pushing and keep learning and keep growing your business? I think one of the things that I did have goals, I had a vision board. I know that sort of sounds funny and people talk about it, but I'll tell you just a quick story about that vision board. 
and why it's important. It's important because of this. I grew up on the East Coast and in Maryland specifically, and I had one of my pictures and my vision board was to have a house that you looked out over the ocean. I love the water. And the weird part about this picture that I never realized until it actually came true was, was that one of the pictures, you couldn't see the beach. And you couldn't see the beach because it was a house on top of a cliff. And that's weird. It's weird that I picked that picture, uh, mainly because on the East Coast, that's not really true. In the Northeast, it is. But in Maryland, Chesapeake Bay and these places, Ocean City, Maryland, New Jersey, uh, Delaware, uh, North Carolina, the houses aren't on cliffs. They're the beach, the beach house, you can see the beach. If I show you the picture out my kitchen window, you can't see the beach, but you can see the ocean. And that wasn't a coincidence. I don't know how it worked, but my subconscious, whatever it is, we live on about a 70-foot cliff that overlooks the ocean, and you can't see the beach because the cliff is so high. And that vision and that vision board and those goals, which amend and change and do things, keeps you focused on why you're doing it. Now, I didn't do it just to make money. I did it because I wanted to own my own time. That really money was just a vehicle for me to do that. And I believe, and I always was, I used to rent houses overlooking the water and things like that, that that's where I got my best ideas and I stayed inspired. So for the, these things, for me, was why I was doing it. And I wanted to help people. And in my line of work back then, in that business, I was helping people catch more fish. And that was as rewarding as catching the fish myself. And all sorts of things have happened from that social networking. People got married. Um, people had business opportunities. I mean, it was just one of those things that kept on giving. So I think the other thing that you have to do, which you do need discipline and is not easy, but you've got to recognize the small wins. And that'll keep you going. Um, and the, and the real question that I would offer your listeners is when you do get down and you will get down, I mean, make no mistake, being an entrepreneur is hard. Just ask the question, why not you? There's no reason that there, that, that it shouldn't be you or can't be you. You may find things in your head that you create as blockers, but those are things that you created. Those aren't necessary things that are real. And you just have to say, why not you? And, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't some kid with a golden spoon. You know, I grew up with a single mom and we struggled and it's just, why not you? Man, really good words there. And if you, if you are intrigued by those words, you definitely need to go get this book on July 1st. It is back of the napkin to business plan in 11 slides so easy you can do it on do it on a flight from San Francisco to New York. Go visit the website of Brandon White. It's brandoncwhite.com. And like I said, go to Amazon anywhere you can get a book and you can pre-order this amazing book right now. I want to say thanks for your time, not just because you took the time to talk to us, but you really broke it down for us, for us to really kind of not just get insight of, of your life journey, but the power of your choices in those times that brought you to where you are today to be able to give back for us to really appreciate this lesson. So I want to say thanks to Brandon for your time and everything you're doing. Wish nothing but the best, man. Thank you so much for having me. This is an amazing show, great inspiration, and I'm really honored to be on here.